I am just going to wait for a few people to join us, attendees, and then we can get started. Sure. I can already see that the attendee count is going up. Uh, hello, friends. Welcome to Be Waste Wise. I am Shweta Mandapani. I am the community builder at Be Waste Wise. You must have seen me often enough in these webinars if you're a repeat watcher or viewer of our webinar. Uh, today, the topic for today's webinar is managing food waste in the Caribbean. We have Sean Cuffey Young, who's a waste management educator, consultant, and social entrepreneur who is moderating this webinar. Sean has moderated other webinars related to uh, waste management, in, uh, related to various aspects of waste management in the Caribbean, please head to the video panel section. You will be able to access them. Earlier this year, she also did a webinar on waste water management in Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, Sean is going to talk to Jordan Norbert, who's a sustainability director at Norbert's Educational Resource Development Enterprises. We received your questions that came in along with the registrations. Over and above, we will take questions during the live webinar. Please use the Q&A section to drop your questions. In case you have questions before the speakers start speaking as well, you could start putting them in. Sean will pick them up as and when it's relevant to the conversation. Over to you, Sean. Thank you very much, Sita, and welcome, welcome everyone. Thank you for taking the time out of, I'm sure, what is a pretty jam-packed day for yourself to join us as we discuss uh, managing food waste in the Caribbean. As Sweetha said, I am Sean Happy Young, and I'm the founder of a social enterprise called Style Environmental Services Limited, based in Trinidad and Tobago. And we are primarily a waste education and training company, but also looking to get our hands and feet wet in this very same space that we're talking about today, and that is food waste. So I'm very, very excited to have Jordan with us today, um, talking about her experience in food waste. And we're gonna talk a little bit about the Caribbean context as well. So before we jump into the conversation, there, according to the Food and Agriculture Associ Organization, the FAO, um, there is a Caribbean-based office and Dr. Fletcher Paul in 2007 said um, that, in the Caribbean and Latin America, we waste a staggering 78 million tons of food waste per year annually, which totals about 6% of global food production. And sadly, there's a wonderful country that I am from called Trinidad and Tobago. <laughs> it's at the top of that list um, in terms of wasting the most food. So it's not. It's not a good list to be on, um, but we, in terms of uh, per urban capita in the world, um, where Trinidad and Tobago is ranked in terms of wasting food. And she says that the FAO estimates that in Trinidad, if we were to reduce the food losses at the retail level, so restaurants and so on, um, we would have enough food to reduce by 50% the undernourished people in the country and that is only for food waste in the retail space um, so there is a lot to be done um, there are pockets of small activities happening all over the caribbean region hence the reason why i reached out to jordan today um, to get this conversation started so as much as there are challenges there's also room for opportunity because if we waste 78 million tons per year um, in Trinidad and Tobago, and I hope one day to not quote this statistic that it will be updated, the majority of the waste, even according to the World Bank, is still organic based in terms of the Latin America and Caribbean countries. I think the last study at the World Bank, which was in 2012, said about a little over 50% was organic, 54 somewhere around if my memory serves me correctly. In Trinidad and Tobago, our food waste accounts for 27%, which is the biggest majority. I'm sure it still is that way, um, but I look forward to a revised waste characterization study so I could see what those numbers currently are because that was done almost 11 years ago. 
So Jordan, welcome and thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> All right. So Jordan, tell us a little bit more about what you do at Nerd and what prompted you to want to get into food waste out of all of the things you could have chosen. Well, you know, honestly, I've always had a love affair with um, sustainability, specifically within the hospitality and tourism sector. That's that's where it started for me um, when I completed, well, while pursuing my first degree um, at the University of Technology in Jamaica, I never heard about sustainability before until I came across my first sustainable tourism class. And it wasn't until that class that, you know, I completely fell in love with this field. And, you know, coupled with my passion for the hospitality sector, you know, I saw that there was a need for there to be a change within the hospitality and tourism sector and all of the environmental damages um, that, that, that the sector was contributing to. Um, of course, at the time, and this was like in 2012, at the time, you know, there weren't really much avenues for persons like me who wanted to divert into sustainability, specifically within this sector. It was very difficult. And if you're someone like me, you really didn't know how to start, how to, how to get your foot in. And, you know, with that, fast forward six years later, you know, I've already migrated to St. Lucia, um, you know, and I, by that time I was teaching, you know, I'd already have five years teaching experience under my belt within the secondary school system in here in St. Lucia. And, uh, you know, I, after being a teacher in food, nutrition, and health for those five years, you know, they, that, that was something else that I became very passionate about. So, you know, I had this very unique background, um, passionate about food and nutrition, passionate about sustainable sustainability and sustainable development, passionate about hospitality and tourism. So, you know, by the time I completed my master's, I was like, okay, I need to start doing something, you understand? Um, you know, I tried sending out resumes to various organization but you know I wasn't getting any call back and then my husband said to me well just start just start just just start and I was like and it didn't dawn on me until he said that that you know I really could just start and you know I started developing um, course content and training materials that really focused on um, sustainability and managing food and beverage within the hospitality and, and food and beverage industry and you know, with that, I launched my business in 2021. Um, I entered Entrepreneurship World Cup um, for St. Lucia last year. Um, out of 50 applicants, I was crowned second run, runner up for St. Lucia with this business initiative. Um, and it is through my Green Cuisine training program that I'm now currently um, providing training um, consultancy and coaching in um, sustainable food and beverage management within the food and beverage and hospitality sector. Yes. Yeah, so oh my God, that is, that is wonderful. And yes. um, I would say that we have similar husbands. Um, <laughs> my husband was encouraged me to get Sile started. Oh, um, so nice. We had um, similar experiences because I was applying to and not getting anything so right yes yes no one no, this this works well right oh yes oh um, yes oh yes so one of the things that um i pulled from what you were just saying is that and based on on the the some of the statistics that i was putting earlier is that in the retail sector where um you have like caterers you have restaurants of which fall within hospitality and tourism and for everybody on the call um jordan is jamaican by birth but she now lives in st lucia so if you're wondering about her accent um she is jamaican <laughs> and very proud so um but she lives she lives and works in st lucia which is also another caribbean island um where she decided to grow um her business so right, so getting back to one of the things I was I was gonna ask about the tourism sector, especially for Jamaica and for St. Lucia and Trinidad and Tobago, um, I would still say tourism is not very high on our list. 
um, because our gross domestic product or GDP is still based, Lord forgive us, on oil and gas, <laughs> right? We do not have such a heavy focus. At Trinidad more so, um, because you know we're two islands, one country. And I'm just saying that for everybody's benefit in case they are not familiar with um, Caribbean islands and how we are. So Tobago's um, GDP is based on tourism, but Trinidad's GDP is not. So we have two very distinct um, ways of operating. So based on your experiences in hospitality and tourism, what are some of the things that you've seen so far um, that is that were discouraging and encouraging in terms of getting into food waste? Well, um, in terms of discouraging, I would say that um, there wasn't enough emphasis on the use of local foods. Um, and of course, using up these, these local ingredients to their full capacity, right? Um, if, if you're able to do that with food, you will find out that you will be able to accumulate a lot less um, food waste. And of course, you know, in, in, in doing my research and, and developing um, my training material, you know, I realized how good this also is for business as well. And I was surprised that more um, food and beverage establishments and more hotels were not really looking at the benefits of minimizing and preventing and even redirecting their food waste in a way that that, that can also help them financially in, in, in their business as well. So, you know, I found that, you know, it. I found that there was a lot of more, a, a lot of food waste happening within um, the sector due to mismanagement, um, not lack of staff training, right? Which is which was which is one of the main reasons why there's a lot of food waste statistically. Um, lack of staff training in in the area, which is why you know I'm actually doing what I'm doing because there there is a, a need for it. Um, one third of all food that comes within hotels and food and beverage establishments actually gets wasted. One third, right? That is a lot, right? So if we were able to put together more systematic mechanisms in place and operations within our kitchen operations to help us minimizing that food waste before it actually gets to the consumer's plate, we would be able to see a much better result in regards to that. When we look at the, um, not only within the hospitality sector, but just along the food, the, the food processing chain in general, right? Um, we see where um, inculcating or infusing sustainability along the food processing chain from agricultural production and harvest to processing, to distribution and retail, to restaurant and catering, and even to domestic consumption, we will see a real impact and a real change so that by the time it gets to, gets to domestic consumption, you will not see as much food waste accumulated because um, it has been managed from the start of the food process. You understand? Um, yeah. Now, this is a very huge undertaking, right? It's a very big change, right? And you need persons who are skilled and have the talent to be able to recognize the issues and be able to put certain systems in place to help alleviate the problem, right? Now, for me, you know, I just, I just told you that I'm more focused on the hospitality sector, right? That is more restaurant and catering and more of the retail side of food, right? Now, you, you have the other areas where we also need experts as well to really focus on these other areas of, of the food processing chain and infusing, excuse me, <coughs> infusing sustainability with, within the other areas of the food processing chain. So we need persons to develop um, more sustainable food systems when, when we look at agricultural production and harvesting. We need persons to look at um, infusing sustainability in the processing path. We need persons to infuse sustainability within distribution and retail and so on and so forth, right? So it's, it's not something that will happen overnight. It will take time, but we need to start having that discussion, right? Um, sending one kilogram 
of food waste to landfill produces the same carbon emissions as landfilling 25,500 milliliter plastic bottles. Imagine that. One kg of food waste is equivalent to 25,500 ml plastic bottles. But yet we don't find that enough attention is being given to food waste specifically within the Caribbean, right? Um, the, the Caribbean region is made up mostly of seeds, small island developing states, right? And we even more so need to tackle this problem even more yeah, so because yeah. we are in a very vulnerable position, right? Even though small island developing states don't contribute significantly to climate change, we still feel much of the brunt of it. You understand? So yeah, we yeah. need to put mechanism, mechanisms in place to help ease that, that impact, right? That we see. Right now we see where fuel prices are going up. Food, wa Correct. food waste can be converted into biofuel. It can be converted into um, compost. We see very heavily in the Caribbean, we use a lot of, amount, a lot of um, chemical fertilizers, okay. right? right? Right now, and this is something that we need to start changing, right? And this is where food waste comes in, right? What, what, what is one man's trash is another man's treasure, right? Exactly. And this is definitely the case for food waste. There are so many opportunities. And in doing that, you are actually creating another workforce, right? You are creating jobs, right? Green businesses, yeah. going, going into the green sector. You understand? So there are so many opportunities that can be derived from setting up systems and mechanisms that actually help in using food waste, not just meat, meat not just mitigating it because you, you, because no matter what you do, you will always have waste, right? There's no way you can cut it out completely, right? But in the areas where you cannot mitigate, that is where you put systems in place so that we can use this food waste in a very positive way. All right, and you touched on, on several things um, in your conversation just now, Jordan, and I yeah. just wanted to highlight a few of them. Um, yeah. In the Caribbean, we are small island developing states. The Prime Minister of Antigua um, said that as a region, and we are talking about um, the English-speaking Caribbean here, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So Trinidad and Tobago being the southernmost, all the way up to Bahamas being the northernmost, right? We only, as a region, we only contribute 0.1% to global greenhouse gas emissions. But because of our warm Caribbean waters, because you know we're warm people, right? Yeah, because of yeah. our warm Caribbean <laughs> waters, we tend to be the most affected by um, the, the effects of climate change, more um, intense hurricanes and so on. Barbuda, for the first time in 150 years, was rendered uninhabitable because of Hurricane Maria. Yeah? so. Um, we have that happening within our region that some of our islands, people have lost their homes, they've had to migrate, they've had to move to other Caribbean islands because of we feel the, the impacts. And you made a very good point in terms of right now, food waste simply ends up in our landfills. And it just sits there, it breaks down, it releases methane gas, which mm -hmm. is which coming out of the last cup was shown to be one of the more potent greenhouse gases. So they're asking us to turn our eyes to methane, not take it away from carbon dioxide, but pay more attention to methane mm -hmm. as well. And we have, and as you, you made a very good point, there's going to be wastage, but according to the waste management hierarchy, reduction is right under prevention. So mm -hmm. if we cannot prevent it, then our goal should be to reduce it. Mm -hmm. And you made a good point in terms of looking along the food processing value chain and seeing all of the different points from generation and agriculture with the farmers to the agro-processors, to the distributors, to the, the, the sellers, <coughs> along that value chain, what are the areas that we can start paying attention to? What are the areas that we can focus on to reduce food waste, because I think we just think about it at the disposal end. 
without mm -hmm. recognizing that there's a whole process before yes. it gets to the disposal and that we have not been paying attention to. And it's critical for us to really start coming up with real solutions. I am an advocate for entrepreneurship and green entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I would love to see. So in Trinidad and Tobago, we have a few people using coconut waste to make compost. We have a few people mm -hmm. that are collecting um, uh, waste from kitchens and turning it into compost. But as you said, <clears throat> there are so many other applications mm -hmm. that we have not even begun to touch on. Mm -hmm. Um, so we have a question here from Tram. Hi, Jordan. How do you th how do you think about the importance and efficiency of encouraging guests in not leaving food waste in medium hotels and restaurants? I believe sometimes plenty of food on the table by buffets is still one of the wow factors made by hotels. So what do you think about the importance and efficiency of encouraging guests in not leaving food waste in medium-sized hotels? and restaurants so what's your take on that John? well you know that's a very good question um and you know as i'm conducting my training now we recently had a discussion about that and uh, you know who sets the pace right it has to be the establishment right how do you get that message across it's all about communication right letting your guests know what you stand for right letting them know that, listen, food waste is unacceptable, putting things in place to prevent guests from taking more than what they need, right? Um, one of the measures I, use, I usually encourage, encourage my clients to, to do is use smaller plates, right? Because in using smaller plates, guests will not take a lot of food and they can make as many trips as they would like. Right, so it's it's all about setting up um, your food and beverage establishment in a way where guests are aware of what you're doing, the message that you're trying to bring bring across, and what you give them access to. You understand? Um, but that 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 is a very very good question. As human beings, we we feel as if because we spent this amount of money, then that means we need to indulge and take more than what we need but really and truly we don't need as much as we think that we do you understand yeah, and yeah. that that is a big reason why we see a lot of food waste um happening right um engage engage with your um with your with your with with your customers and and, and your guests put up little um placards or little or little um or little cards on the on the tables where 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 guests dine and just give them information about food waste and how impacts how it how it impacts society how how it impacts them right and it is through this education and spreading awareness that people will try, start to change their habits and it's all about changing habits right yes. especially yeah. you know especially in in the caribbean region yeah um, we, yeah yeah we have a saying here i don't know i don't know if they have one in Tunisia in jamaica but um, we have a saying here in Trinidad and Tobago, and guys, it's going to sound a little colloquial, but I'm giving it to you in Trinidad dialect. It yeah. says, um, your eye bigger than your belly, which means, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, because you're seeing so much food, you just right. decide, oh, I want to take all of this food to right. eat, but if you are physically incapable of eating all of that, exactly. food, so we say your eye bigger than your belly. Exactly. Um, but it is as you as you said, and I wanted to to mention because I was in a session with Megan from the Ibero Star Group, and she talked about the reduced size of plates mm -hmm. as one of yeah. the things that they use to yeah. help the guests to understand that you don't you can take the smaller plate. It's better you fill the smaller plate and go back, yeah. and yeah. you have this large plate and you waste the food. Yeah. So yeah. um, when she mentioned that, I was like, wow, it seemed so simple, yeah. but it's so effective. And yeah. they have been able to save I mean, millions over wow. a period of time of food wow. wasting just by changing that simple action. So yeah. it is about um, education. It mm -hmm. is about awareness. Yeah. It is about 
um, because I'm fascinated by behavior change. And yes, yes. To see how people, you know, what, what persuades people to change the way they think and behave. Yeah. And there are so many tools that can be used. Yeah. Um, I use it now in my own work um, to encourage people to engage in the kinds of behavior that we want to see. So thank you so much. Thank you very much, Sean, for that question. I think yeah. we have another one. So let me just check. Right, so from Ms. Baptiste, question, have there been any attempts made to divert some of the food waste from these hotels for the less fortunate while having a third party take away the liability risk from the hotel or restaurant? I've heard in the past that there's a reason that, um, that I've heard in the past that is a reason it is not diverted before it's shown away. So Jordan, before you answer, yeah. I want to answer Frejan. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly. So you could feel free to correct me as well in the chat. Um, so in Trinidad and Tobago, um, so Jordan, think about the answer on your end, mm -hmm. right? Have to yeah. any attempts to divert food waste from the hotel to the less fortunate yeah. um, while having a third party take away the risk from the hotel. Yeah. Um, so in Trinidad and Tobago, there's an organization. I was trying to actually get them to join you today. Mm -hmm. um, called Nourish TT, where they try to take um, food waste, mm -hmm. excess food waste, and divert it to the less fortunate. Now, let me tell you what I've heard. Mm -hmm. So I am currently working with one of our biggest chains of supermarkets. They also do cooked food, right? Because mm -hmm. I am a consumer, so I buy sometimes. If I don't get a chance to cook lunch, I go mm -hmm. and I buy food, right? Mm -hmm. um, and they throw away a lot of food because the food has a 24-hour expiry mm -hmm. date, right? Yeah. So they are dumping food and the containers and everything. And mm -hmm. I asked them, said, have you all um, ever considered giving the food to the less fortunate? Because mm -hmm. one of the entrepreneurs that I greatly admire, her name is Jasmine Crew. Um, mm -hmm. She's in the U.S. and the founder of Good R. She, that's, that's her business model. She mm -hmm. takes that food. At least that's how she started. She has since grown. But yeah. she took extra food from restaurants and hotels and gave it to the less fortunate. Nice. Our institutions are saying, oh, we're worried about the risk. And that's what Frejan was talking about. We don't want mm -hmm. to give people food and then they get sick. Mm -hmm. um, so we don't want that liability, mm -hmm. right? But she talked mm -hmm. about engaging a third party. So what? What is your take on that as well? That diversion of food to the less fortunate. I love that because we have plenty of people. The FAO talked about malnourishment and that we have so much, so much food we could be given to the less fortunate that we're just throwing away. So a, a part of me hurts when I hear that good food is being dumped. Yeah. So you what know, is your take on that? You know, this is a very hot topic um, issue for me. Um, you know, and this and 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 this was another thing that came up in recently in in, in one of my training sessions. Um, I remember I'm gonna share an experience with you. I remember I a couple of years ago I took my Form Four students on a field trip um, to have a tour of their of of a hotel's executive kitchen, right? The, the main kitchen where everything goes down, where all the magic happens, right? And, you know, it was a great tour. Um, the head chef, you know, were really engaging the students, showing them the different parts of the kitchen, um, the serving area, the dining room, and so on. And then by, by the end of the tour, um, one of the students asked the head chef, well, what happens to the food that the guests don't consume? And the chef said, well, we threw it away. And I, it was such a cringeworthy moment because I could see like the students looking at each other like, what? Like, it was like a shock. Like, and, and I too, as a student, remember having that realization when I started doing food prep for my, for my, for my first degree at UTEC. And I remember we 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 had a practical and we and we forgot to bring our doggy bags. It was one of our first classes, and we had all this food, and we we're like, oh, all of us realized that we completely forgot to bring our doggy bags, and we were like, um, so Miss, what do we do with the food? And she was like, I don't know, like she was very nonchalant about it. So it's like we we're like, so we can throw it away, and she's like, do whatever you want. 
Now, she didn't say, yes, do it, but she didn't say, no, don't do it. Don't so do it's it. like, it was, it, was, it was at that moment that I, and as the more I ventured into the, into the sector, I realized that that was just the kitchen culture. You understand? And it was a very eye-opening realization for me right and you know going 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 back to my my recent trading session where we're having discussion about donating food um when i had that experience during my food preparation class the first thing that came to my mind that this was many years ago was my goodness but we can donate this food that was one of the first things that came to my mind and you know i don't know why there is so much of a taboo um, in the Caribbean specifically, because we, we have we have other countries in other regions that do it, right? Which means that it's possible, right? Um, in France, it is actually illegal to, 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 to throw away food, right? Um, for, for any type of food and beverage establishment, for any type of supermarket, you cannot throw away a certain amount of food. You have to find a way to either give it away or use it in another way, right? And certain parts of the states are, start, are starting to bring this policy in place as well. Um, and I think, okay, so my, I'm saying to myself, okay, if it's, <coughs> excuse me, if it's an issue where you, you, you don't want persons to contract any type of food world illnesses from the food or whatever, then that means it needs to, it means that you need to strengthen your HACCP protocols, guidelines and procedures. It's simple as that, right? Get persons to have the proper training, right? And this and this is where you marry HACCP. And I honestly believe that there should be a stronger correlation between sustainability and HACCP as it relates to food, right? And I've spoken about this before um, at, at um, other events. And I think more needs to be done in um, getting these two together. Right, um, sustainability and managing food waste can be seen as a countermeasure for um, HACCP initiatives and, and guidelines and protocols. Right, so I believe that this is something that is very possible. Um, I just think it's just some because, as I said, other countries and other regions are doing it. So it's just a matter of having that discussion, right, and really getting the the the, the government involved right, in dialogue and seeing how we can put policies and laws in place that can protect third parties that actually want to do this. Yeah, right? so, and I think, yeah. I think often too that we, it's used as the simple answer because right. it, is the, it is the easier. Right, it's, it's yes, yes, yes. Versus, let me really see how I can get this done um, right. in a way that protects my organization, right. but also allows us to give <coughs> those who need it because there are so many right. people. And I'm like, if you want after hours, you can tell the people, okay, we are giving away food from this yeah. time. To right. There are so many things that you can do, but yeah. it means going outside of the box. Yes. So yes. There has to be some yes and the ability to want to go outside of the box. And exactly. I think a lot of our organizations in the Caribbean, they yeah. do not want to, because exactly. as you rightly said, we have counterparts in other parts of the world that are exactly. doing it. Yeah. What are the implementing mechanisms for them to be able to do it that we can say, okay, we may not be able to do everything in this way, but exactly. we can take many pieces of it and put right. it in place. So we don't, exactly. we don't, like I am, I'm not a fan of taking something card branch from somewhere else and dropping it into, into right. our islands and right. saying, yes, we will. No, right. because we have to see what are the, what are the supporting things that they have that allow them to do what they do. And yeah. if we don't have them, what are the things that we need to put in place? And you made a exactly. very good point about PASAP and its connection to sustainability, especially yeah. as the food waste, because they were yeah. what support you and say well i can't according to us if i can't um yeah. but to me if there is a if there is a strong willingness to where there is a will there yeah. will be a way so yeah. one of the other things that i wanted to ask you jordan and for mm. those who are listening please feel free to continue to send us questions in the 
Q and A section, not the chat box, the Q and mm -hmm. A section, so that I can quickly access them and ask Jordan your questions. And thank you so much for the questions you have been asking so far. So one of the other things, Jordan, that I wanted to talk about um, and that you highlighted, there is a, so just like I talked about a, a waste management hierarchy, mm -hmm. um, there's one for food um, and food waste. Uh, I know in your work, there is a, you have like a, a guidance or, or a document or something. So this is, I'm actually prompting your ability to, to want to share it and discuss it with those of us who are on the um, webinar today. But I think within there, one of the other questions that I had for you um, mm -hmm. was talking about like, what are some of the, we mentioned it already, but what mm -hmm. are some of the, the ways according to that, that we could probably implement that you've seen from your experience in talking to restaurants and talking to hotels. Um, because for those of you listening in the Caribbean region, we have hotels of varying sizes. So we have guest houses. Right. Right. Which are much smaller. We have the smaller hotels, then we have the chain hotels. So in Trinidad and Tobago, we have the Hilton, we have the Hyatt um, Regency, we have the Radisson, we have the Portyard Marriott. So we have those big name chain hotels as well. Yeah. Um, so but I always tell the guest houses, you have you are sitting in a beautiful seat. You have mm -hmm. the opportunity to put things in place for your business that yep. would be somewhat of a greater challenge for your larger competitors to do. And what that will do, there is ecotourism that will mm -hmm. drive people to you oh, yes. because you have these things in place. So let's oh, talk yes. about that and be free to share um, the slide that we, we, were, spoken, we were talking okay. about before the session began. Okay, so, yeah. just give, yeah, so just give me a minute. Right, so, um, Everybody seeing? Yes, I am okay. seeing for sure. Yes. Great. So this is the food recovery hierarchy. All right. Now, in the well, in most Caribbean countries, um, there is no systematic approach as to how we manage um, food waste. Right. So it therefore means that establishments, hotels, um, restaurants, and so on have to kind of put their own mechanisms in place. Um, to try and help manage their food waste or divert their food waste, right? So these are these these are the steps that they can take. And of course, at the at the at the top of that hierarchy, of course, is trying to cut down the food waste before it actually gets to the consumer's plate. Right. So you try and reduce the volume of surplus of food generated within your establishment. Right. Um, for food that is still um, present. Right. Um, of course, as we just spoke about, persons can donate extra food to food banks, soup kitchens and shelters. Right. And of course, this is this is it's, a, it's, it's not a part of our culture as we have said um, in the Caribbean to really donate food. So this is, and of course, this goes down back to changing habits, right? And mindset, our, our mindset and our perceptions, right? So this, this of course is, is a definitely another area that we can engage in discussion in, right? And see how we can um, set up those systems that we can be able to donate um, extra food. And of course, what a lot of hotels are doing, the ones who are trying to be more sustainable, is that they, they have a good rapport with, with farmers, with, with um, local farmers on, on, on island. So their food waste, they would divert it to food scraps and give it to um, farmers who have um, animals, right? Or give it to farmers who want to use it um, as compost um, for their crops, right? And then, of course, we have the industrial use, which is something that I think um, we need to start examining more. Um, food waste provides waste oils for rendering fuel conversion and food scraps for, for digestion to recover energy. 
right? This is, this is another area that we can go into. And of course, we have composting, creating nutrient-rich soil amendment. And of course, the last resort should be um, incineration or um, diverting food waste, um, sorry, sending food waste to landfills. Now, I know in St. Lucia, solid waste management um, has a project where they are um, trying to convert their food waste to compost. They have a composting project. Um, I'm not sure how, how far along they have gone in terms of how successful they have been in um, converting their food waste into compost and how much. Um, but I think that is a really good start. Um, but honestly, I feel as if our landfills need to be converted um, into waste management plant facilities. I think that is what needs to happen, right? Because at the end of the day, um, the waste is just there and it can be recycled, it can be upcycled, and it can be converted into other forms of energy and organic fertilizers and compost and compost tea and, and so on, right? Um, but as I said, this takes a systematic approach, right? The government needs to be involved in, in an undertaking like this. The private sector, yes, it's good that the private sector, you know, is making strides, entrepreneurs are make, making strides in sustainable businesses, but we need the support of our government to see the real effects and the real impact that this can have on our society on, on a larger scale, right? Um, the, 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 the organization that I'm working with currently um, in doing my green cuisine training, they have a lot of initiatives that they are trying to push within their organization, but, but because of how the system is set up, it's difficult for them to be able to carry out certain sustainable initiatives that they would like to, right? Yeah. So even though, yes, we, can do our best as establishments, as individuals, if we do not get the support of our governments, it is going to be very, very difficult, right? And that is just the bottom line. And um, so on that point as well too, and I, I would, so I'm asking it now, not for you to answer now, because let me just, I wanted to say a couple of things before we come to a close, but yeah. on this being, I wanted you to think about what are some of the other recommendations um, on the way forward in terms of dealing with food waste in the Caribbean region that you have. Um, outside of, you mentioned one of them already, which is getting support from the government to put legislative things in place um, where it governs that, because even with private sector, we are only governed by yes within our own, the, our own confines as organizations but if that work is supported by the bigger picture which is the government of the day then that mm -hmm. works um brenda made a very good point she actually said um and i'm tending to agree with brenda on this one um brenda says that she no longer uses this um food recovery hierarchy because it puts industrial use above composting mm -hmm. i would have actually which the two I would put composting yeah. and industry, yeah, uh, because it allows, as she said, it allows. Sometimes it it doesn't allow the focus to be on coming up with local solutions. And to me, not even just composting. There are so many other um, local solutions that can be derived. I mean, I was in a session about coconut waste, and they talked about activated yeah. charcoal. You yes. know, that is on local, and there was a young lady from Dominica. That's her business. She makes wow. activated charcoal, right? Nice. Um, we use in the beauty industry, and she said she wants to take it a step up and um, look at making it for lab purposes because there's another process um, that she would have to do if it has to be used in a lab, yeah. right? So we have based on, and that's why I remember when I spoke about 
not taking things um straight from and adapting it based on our our context and what right. we see. Uh, because for me, I wouldn't want food waste to go to a landfill at all. Nice. Um, what we talk about in waste management is integrated solid waste management, which combines the use of facilities like most material recovery facilities for recyclables, which talks about setting up systems for processing of organic material and yeah. only what needs to get to the landfill, like incinerator ash from our hospitals when they um, incinerate biomedical waste. Then right. only those things should end up in the landfill. Right now, um, is the the stove and the pots and the food mm. and everything that goes in our landfills. Yeah. We don't have. Some countries are better than some. Let me not. Yeah. Let me not say all of us. There are yeah. some countries that are um, that have taken even further steps. Um. So you can yeah. stop sharing the, the screen, Jordan. That have taken sure. further steps to uh where their waste management is concerned. So Brenda, please share with me your email address. I would love to take a look at the waste management. I was actually writing it down <laughs> at the waste <laughs> management hierarchy that your organization put together. And I would love to give you nice. that um, on that as well. Okay, Brenda, Black, so you could um, put your email address in the chat and I will take a look at your hierarchy and send you feedback. So thank you so nice. much for that amazing point. Um, Pratima, oh, the chat is disabled. Okay, Brenda, thank you. Let me make a note of it one time. Pratima Pandey says, please suggest um, some more practical ways to feed safe surplus food to hungry and underprivileged. So Pratima, I would say that we don't have all of the answers. Yeah. Um, <laughs> some, of, some of them involve using third party organizations like Norwich TT and Trinidad and Tobago. Right. Um, just similar to what Goodar was had done in the US. So it means because of a lot of the organizations, they don't want to deal with the liability or the risk yeah. Yeah. Um, with giving the food directly to um, <coughs> people. Um, but I think if they do it within the, the expiration time frame, I think nothing's wrong with that um, because it's still within the window. Um, but if it goes beyond that window, then use of third party organizations would be a great um suggestion there as well too um so that and then they would have to develop their own systems to say okay this food has to be consumed by you know or if it's fruits and vegetables then that's a different thing altogether that has a longer shelf life than the cooked food right mm -hmm. so that is pretty much um i don't know if jordan do you have at least one other example um, to feed safe uh, surplus food to the hungry other than using the, the third party? Well, um, as, a, as an educator um, within the school system, we do have cases where children come to school hungry, right? Now, the Ministry of Education in St. Lucia does have a school feeding program, but it's for the primary school, right? Um, the secondary school level, we they don't have anything in place like a school feeding program for the students and a lot of the times um the teachers are the ones that are putting their own resources um into ensuring that the children get proper meals right th throughout the day so you know one of my ideas was that you know through well through my organization what I am looking to do is I want to get food and beverage establishments on board in being in, in trying to create um, a school feeding program on island, right? So these food and beverage establishments could work directly with schools. So, so, so they would act as donors to these schools, right? So they would um, donate lunches, um, meals to the school, and of course, the school would manage it and, and distribute these meals to these students. So that is another approach that can be taken as well. All right, so Pratima, that's another suggestion um, of building relationships between the organization and the receiving party. So in, as Jordan just mentioned, talk about schools, because in Trinidad, we have the school feeding program as well too. Um, I think ours extends to, to secondary schools. I could be wrong. Yeah, man, it extends to secondary okay. schools. Because I remember 
um I remember again um we call it box lunch. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so we box, right? So yes. I remember yeah, we used to fight for box lunch because of the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yes. But um I think for us, but I could be wrong, eh? But mm. I from what my memory says, I think we do allow it for our secondary school children. I know yeah. for sure it's in primary school. For sure, for sure, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, I think they made a decision to extend it because of that, recognizing yeah. that they are secondary school children that are coming yeah. to school um, and they need to be fed as well. So, um, Jordan, my last question. Oh, sorry. Friyan has another question. So we'll take this one and then don't forget my last question, right? In terms of mm -hmm. recommendations for the way forward. So Prejean wants to know beyond funding, what are some barriers to operating landfills as a waste management plan, um, plant? Well, I could answer that one. Okay. <laughs> Does lack of expertise play a plot, part in this at all? I've noticed Barbados has more cohesive waste management systems and solutions. Um, you are very correct, Prejean. Um, Barbados does practice that integrated solid waste management that I talked about. Um, and they have a facility, which is a private public partnership Keywords there. So the government of Barbados partnered with private sector to set up this facility. Yes, that, that's it. Um, the trucks driving and it's integrated. So, you have, so they have a MOOC for um, the recyclables. They have um, organic waste management systems. They also work with smaller recyclers. So they would collect electronic waste or e-waste. And the smaller recyclers will come to that one location and take the e-waste from there. So it is a, I use it in my own class because I have a short course in waste management um, for working professionals. And my students always said, you know, Sean, that is a beautiful example of how government and private sector can work together. And I said, yes, that's why I share it with you all because we don't have to look beyond the Caribbean region for good examples. We have fantastic examples right here within the Caribbean region. Um, so they, so that shows how um, the both organizations, public and private sector, could work together um, to make that a possibility. But in terms of the plan setup for Frisian as well, that transition. Um, our landfills are managed by the state in Trinidad and Tobago, and most landfills are managed by the states in the various Caribbean islands. Um, it is wanting to shift from regular landfilling to that integrated system, which must happen at the government level. Jordan spoke about the importance of having government, um, government role and they're recognizing what their role is. So in Trinidad and Tobago, we have the Trinidad and Tobago Solid Waste Management Company Limited or Swim Call, which is who I worked for. That's where I found my love of waste actually was with, while I was working there. Um, and they are responsible for uh, the management of all three major landfills in the country. And I say landfills because there's a limited covering of the waste. Um, but they have indicated by the year 2025 that they want to institute our first sanitary engineered landfill of which St. Lucia has one, right? So it really sits at the government making the decision, rethinking how they process waste um, in every sense of the word. Um, according to our figures, half of what we throw away can be recycled, 50%. That includes paper, cardboard, organics, and the plastics, glass, cans, tetra packs, metals, and so on, right? So 50% of what we currently send to our landfills can be processed in another way. Um, so it is about, yes, having the expertise, uh, looking to see what are the systems that are available that can work in the Caribbean context. I cannot overemphasize that. What can work here? What applies to us based on our waste compositions? Um, and as such, to be able to set up the right systems for that. So, Fran, I hope I answered, Frejan, I hope I answered your question. Um, you're most welcome. Uh, Doreen asks, are there any municipal scale composting projects happening anywhere across the Caribbean? So, Doreen, I will also answer that. And then I will ask Jordan to close with our way forward question. Um, so, I mentioned Barbados already. 
Um, Barbados is one of those countries that has um, a municipal scale system through the Sustainable Barbados Recycling Center. And they, are, they have their website too, so you can feel free to, to Google them, right? Um, so they have a large scale where they process, they make mulch, they make compost, um, and then they sell it. People can come straight to the, the site and sell that material. So I know of Barbados. Trinidad and Tobago, we do not have municip municipal scale composting facilities, um, which manages the waste nationally. There are a few larger scale collectors. One of them takes coconut waste and turns it into a soil amendment um, and uh, makes compost. There are two of them. Um, I don't know if the second one has started in a big way, but I just read that they were given a parcel of land on which, uh, on which to start their project. So that's Trinidad and Tobago. Outside of that, um, Torain, we have some smaller, smaller scale people doing composting in Trinidad and Tobago. As I mentioned, for some reason, the, the food waste bug hit me. <laughs> and I think maybe it has something to do with connecting with Jordan too. Um, but I realize that there is opportunity still. Um, there are so many different applications and we haven't, we haven't even scratched the surface, but just beginning to scratch the surface in the Caribbean. Um, Jordan, would you know if there's anything happening in Jamaica? I'm not sure if there's no, anything I'm not. No, I'm not, I'm not too cool with exactly what is going on in Jamaica right now. That's and something so I have Jordan, to follow up on. Have any, um, um, I know, I know a few months ago, they started an initiative where they wanted persons to bring their green waste, right, um, right to the to to a facility where they turned it into I think, I can't remember if it's compost or if it's it's if it's some kind of biofuel but but they did have something going on like that. Yeah, yeah. because we have, we have some organizations here in Trinidad that are um, looking at um, wanting to, to, to set up like biogas digesters um, for like a dairy farm, because we do have a number of dairy farmers in Trinidad and Tobago. Um, so the, it is happening to rain, and I would say mo more so on a smaller scale than a larger scale. There are a few countries that have it much larger, um, but I am happy to see because I have some colleagues who are doing it so I know for sure I'm happy to see that work is happening even if on a smaller scale um, but to have like a big tent you know Jordan is doing what she's doing in St. Lucia I am about to do what I would like to start in Trinidad and Tobago because we need to we have so many different things that make up the food waste waste types we have fruits we have vegetables we have cooked food, you know, so we have, we have coconut waste because in the Caribbean, we love our coconut water, right? So we have, so it can be broken down into separate, you know, individual types that you can manage by yeah. itself. Yeah. Um, and of course, you can also put them <coughs> together, you know, so um, I think there's still room for mm. other players to come in and, and use some of the other waste types that we may not have been paying attention to. Um, and to just kind of, you know, I don't know how to, I'm trying to, the Trini word coming in my head, but kind of just, you know, make the, make the thing a little more dynamic, for lack of mm -hmm. a better word. So Jordan, mm -hmm. as we wrap up today's conversation, yeah. um, what are some of the recommendations? I always close all of my sessions with recommendations on the way forward. So other than government, because government um, mm -hmm. really having a bigger role, which you've already mentioned. What are yeah. some other recommendations that you get? Well, two, I want to focus on two main recommendations. The first one is uh, using um, or incorporating education, right? Um, creating a sustainability for education. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> education for sustainable development, incorporating something like this into our education system, yeah. right? Um, where we start from young, focus, target the young people, right? Because they, they are the ones that have to carry on whatever initiatives that we that we put in place, right? I mean, and we want to change those habits from the time they are young, right? So 
we can look at how we can infuse sustainability within our curricula across various subject areas, agriculture, um, what else? The, the TVET subjects, right? Yeah, food and um, nutrition. Yes, right, food and nutrition, clothing and textiles. Um, there, there, there's so many opportunities, technical drawing. Um, there, there are so many ways of incorporating sustainability within our curriculum. So, you know, and I, I would like to challenge CXC, CXC examination counseling in trying to revamp their current syllabus for the various subject areas that, that they have. I was so surprised to know that there's not a full um, syllabus or module on, on organic farming within um, the agriculture. Yes, yes, I was really, really surprised about that, right? This is, this, these are the things that we need to start doing, right? Um, another recommendation I will make is that we need to start seeing how we can use technology in helping us to fight food waste. How can we include technology? I know that um, you have companies across the world who have developed apps that can help food and beverage establishments manage their food waste, track their food waste. And of course, this, this can help them financially as well. They can see a higher return on their investment, right? Um, using um, smart beans or using different kinds of AI technology that can help establishments monitor and track their food waste. Um, Monitor your food waste in, in, your, in your establishment by um, keeping an account, weighing your food waste on a daily basis, keeping track of it, right? This is the only way you are, you are, you are going to see how you are making a difference within your organization, right? So these are my, these are my key recommendations in moving forward and you know, helping us to fight um, this battle when it comes on to food waste and managing it better. Yes, because it is indeed a battle, but it is yeah. a battle that needs to be fought and needs to be won yeah. um, by us here in the Caribbean. So Jordan, I want to take this opportunity to thank you so very much. I think traditionally the waste management space has not been a technology focused space, yeah. um, but especially in the Caribbean, we're still very yeah. old. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it, it, technology is not going to go anywhere. Yeah. So us trying to like, no, that needs to stay yeah. over there. That yeah. sort of thinking um, definitely needs to change. Yeah. Um, but I always say it is not always about doing things better, but mm -hmm. sometimes you simply need to do better things. Things, yeah. use of technology is one of those better things that we can be doing. Yeah. So Jordan, again, I want to thank you so much, guys. Peter would have thank you put for having in the me. Chat. <laughs> You're most welcome. Peter would have put in the chat um, how you could connect with both Jordan and I. So Jordan gave her uh, WhatsApp number and her social media handles, um, so you could connect with her and also feel free to connect with me um, on LinkedIn. I'm quite active. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, so feel free to connect with me there as well just in case you might have had any other questions um and uh, you know you can reach out to us you can whatsapp your questions to jordan and she will do her best to answer you so everyone i want to thank you so very much for staying with us through um this entire session today i trust you learned a lot about um the challenges that we experience in the Caribbean with managing our food waste, but seeing that the door is open um, for opportunities uh, to really get us to manage our food waste in a much better and sustainable, because Jordan mentioned that word repeatedly during our mm -hmm. discussion, a much sustainable way. So thank you so very much, everyone. 
Um, Switzer, is there anything else you want to say at this point? Or can no. we just tell everybody bye-bye? <laughs> thank you, Sean, and thank you, Jordan. A uh, reminder you, to everybody, welcome. the webinar is going to be up on our website and YouTube channel in a fortnight. If you haven't uh, signed up for our newsletter, please go ahead and do it from our website. Thanks a lot for your time. Sean, you both managed to cover a lot, as you usually managed to cover a lot of ground in a uh, <laughs> short webinar. Yeah. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Yes. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take You're care. You're welcome again. Bye-bye. <laughs>